This is Night um, Shift. This is a new feature that arrived in iOS 9.3. It's the first time, in my opinion, Apple has f fallen for the late night television blue blocker uh, pitch, and they've decided to put blue blockers in their smartphone. What's the story? <laughs> So we do have a circadian rhythm, and that is really important to us, feeling tired or not. And the first, the couple of hours before sleep, when usually the sun would go down, and that's the way that our bodies have evolved, we would produce a lot of melatonin. Right. And melatonin is the natural um, transmitter that says, we're tired now, we can go to sleep. Right. Now, just Recently, actually, 1998, we um, ended up finding out on African tree frogs, uh, clawed frogs, that there was another type of receptor that we had, which were called melopsin. And those are photo light receptors wow. that react very strongly to blue wavelength light. And are and they in our eyeballs? Where in, are they? They're only in our eyes. Okay. Like, that's it. So, yes, it's another having, like rod and cone? It's like another receptor in there yes, somewhere? Yes, it's wow. the third receptor. Wow. And so that, that affects most strongly to blue wavelength light, so short wavelength light. And it will actually inhibit for hours the production of melatonin. And we need melatonin to fall asleep. So they, they've they done, t and this is not me. This is actually science. They've done <laughs> hundreds. Okay, there's another title. <laughs> this is not me. This is actually science. I got to write these down because I'll forget them. Okay, go ahead. Um, they've been, they've been there's, there's hundreds of thousands of studies that have gone through um, sleep and why we sleep and how to sleep better. And so the best way would be just not to use your tech. It's not just that. Well, that's, the, okay. The so that's my point. Well, if the yes. tech is orange, you're still awake looking at you're Instagram at 3 in the morning. You're still awake. And yes, you're probably getting, if it's something that's really intriguing and exciting, that's probably going to make you be more awake. You're, you're, or if it makes you think or worry, if you're reading the discussion draft from, you know, the Feinstein bill, you're going to be more upset <laughs> than you would yeah. doing something else. Yeah. But... But at least with it being larger wavelength of light, you're still producing more melatonin than you would if you were watching your reading your phone um, as it would before with all of this light going straight to um, inhibit the production of melatonin. And so the studies have shown that it works. Now, we haven't done studies yet on night shift in and of itself. But the studies have shown that using a dimmer light and using a light on a larger wavelength of spectrum does help more melatonin, less melatonin be inhibited so that you can fall asleep faster. And those studies have shown that. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't think that, we even no? knew, by the way, I don't think we even knew till photography came along that the sun was blue and the uh, indoors was yellow. I think that our eyes adjust. It doesn't, well, it, you don't go outside and go, wow, it's blue out here because well, our eyes adjust, get, our eyes, our brains right. adjust. Right. Well, and you get many wavelengths of light right. in the sun. It's not just, this is right. not like, you know, you're, you're Superman and, I, you know, I the yellow under, sun gives you power. I would agree is, with you that, I mean, when I'm, when I'm traveling, I try to walk in the sun, even, you know, trying to get my yeah. circadian rhythms, my diurnal uh, rhythms psych synchronized to the clock of the place I'm. At. And so I would agree with you, bright light, sunlight uh, definitely tells your body, oh, it's daytime. Uh, you know, I'm looking at some of these studies. Like, here's one. 14 people. No, there's some there's some big, huge studies. Okay. <laughs> this one has 14, sure. 14 normal subjects <laughs> were exposed at night not. to a 60-minute bright light pulse between 1 and 2 a.m. while wearing orange lens glasses or gray lens glasses and the amount of saliv sal salivary melatonin. And by the way, I mean, it's 25%. It's not even a huge... And not, by the way, I take melatonin. It doesn't do crap. You, melatonin will only work for a few weeks. You cannot use this as a <laughs> okay. long-term sleep plan <laughs> because your body will adjust. Okay. Right? So you're not going to produce melatonin if it's expecting you to get it from a secondary source. I know. You are an actual <laughs> sleep expert. And, and I'm so not a sleep expert. I'm an anxiety specialist, so I'm anxiety is my, my expertise. Yeah, but anxiety is what's exactly. keeping me from sleeping, so. That's true. That's true. But probably most of that is because you have cycling thoughts that go through your head or your problem right. solving. Right. At the middle of the night. I can't stop thinking. Decide, right. We're going to solve the problems of the world at night, which is the worst time to do it. And we don't have any distractions to keep us from thinking these thoughts. And so they plague us, um, which is another issue. But 
you know, you might as well use night shift. Put it on the the brightest setting. Eventually, I would, but your it makes eyes everything, will adjust. It makes everything look but like I'm reading parchment paper. No, but your your eyes will adjust. The interesting, the really cool thing, you a lot of optical right. illusions will show this. Yes, that yeah. we see white, what we assume should be white. We right. will end up our brains no, will true. flip it and see it yeah. as as white -ter. Yeah, you get used to it. And yeah, night shift gives you a slider. I just feel like this is Apple kind of. No, <laughs> it's to actually, me this looks like actually, Apple's desperate, frankly, for in some, a new feature. Uh, I'm actually, I was, I've actually been sleeping better. And again, really? I'm a study of one. This is a case study. Best thing to do would be put it away, not use it at all. But I'm not going to put it away. Ah. Uh, well, I've, <laughs> been using an app called, I've been using an app called Flux on my Mac. Yeah, F.Lux, uh, yeah. F.Lux. Yeah. And uh, it certainly worked for me. Now, two things, whether it's actually worked. Yeah, case study of two my, now, Leo. <laughs> uh, whether, it, whether it's worked because my screen's yellow and I can't see it anymore. And tells me I actually should go to bed, or whether it's because right. there's blue light not hitting my cones, or maybe both. But uh, I think there's two things. I do want to point out there's a wonderful, wonderful podcast uh, called In Our Time, which is hosted on the BBC with Melvin Bragg on circadian rhythms. And they dive into this for 30 minutes, uh, talking deeply around circadian rhythms and blue lights and this extra cones. And it's a mm -hmm. truly fascinating article to listen to. If you do want to dive deeper into it, I could highly recommend that to you. Didn't they do studies of uh, people and they put them in caves where there was no mm -hmm. indication of day or night? Yeah. And weird things happened, like they shifted into um, polyphasic sleep. Yes. They do. That's they do, and we, we, we change our, our sleep habits as well. Without the cues of, of having a light source, we will sleep sometimes for 18 hours, then we'll sleep, you know, be up for four. And, then, and so there is a huge shift without light. We do need that to kind of keep our our body's clock in sync. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, and, and it may be that polyphasic sleep, the idea that you sleep in two shifts, uh, one from when the sun goes down to about four hours in, say 11 or midnight, and then you're up for four hours and you sleep for another four hours, is the, some think prior to electric lighting was the natural mode of sleep. Yeah, there's been a lot of debate on that yeah. for sure on yeah. on whether or not that that's the the proper way to sleep. There's a lot of people that do sleep that way and it works out really well for them. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, unfortunately there's no real way to go back in time so that we can see what was the best way we sleep and it might have been very very culturally influenced. So if there was things right. that you had to do in the middle of the night, you know, a lot of dangers that were happening or or something you'd have to do that that would be really important. Apparently, according to the studies I've read, this is when people had sex. <laughs> Well, in the Samuel Pepys diary from the 1600s, he talks extensively about getting up at midnight or two in the morning to go and have a drink with his friends yeah. and come back to bed at four or five yeah. in the morning to sleep through. And yeah, sleep everybody whatever. was up at that time. Wasn't, wasn't that yeah. just so that his wife wouldn't know? Um, Pepys was perhaps. a party animal. Everyone knows that. <laughs> <laughs> That's just so you don't get caught. Ohm, yeah. Ohm, <laughs> Ohm, Ohm, how do you sleep, Ohm? You sleep well? You know, I, I sleep in um, about five hours a night and take a nap in the evening between 6 and 7.30 and then go go out after that. Is it the case people all over the world sleep roughly eight hours between like 11 and 7 every... I mean, isn't that like this... Is that just at a Western standard or is that a standard worldwide? No, I think pretty much everybody sleeps like yeah. that. Some people sleep less, some people sleep more. In my case, I actually... Um, when I got sick, my doctor actually pointed out that the reason I had high blood pressure was because I I was staying up too late, ah. and and that led to my body never actually clocking down and always being like you know in a, in, yeah. in a hyper mode and 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 that led to led to my blood my blood pressure situation. But you also, don't a little bit. Your doctor maybe, and maybe not, but that you might be a little bit or misunderstood to that because it's not really about, uh, it's more about the time that you spend to sleep. So some people are, are night owls and they like to sleep later. We've also found that there is a small group of people that really needs two to four hours of sleep. And that's exceptionally not me. rare. Not me. <laughs> not me. But I am a night owl. But, I like to stay up till one or two in the morning and sleep yeah. in in the morning. That's kind of my yeah, natural well, you're probably. Rhythm. You, you do so much, you, you're giving such an output during the day doing these shows and putting it all online, you down. need to also decompress. Yeah. That's also why but what I'm a happens, drunk. 
<laughs> it works, that works. Yeah. Um, though that then will wake you up after three hours. So it's only a depressant for a certain amount of time. <laughs> I know, and it then it will work. actually wake you up. It doesn't work very well. Yeah. But what happens that will help for your blood pressure um, is that when you're sleeping through the night, our healing happens mostly when we're rested. So either low stress or when we're sleeping. So most of our cellular repair happens at night. Most of the um, working also on, so our brain uses up refuse. So it, it like brain poop. We do most of the cleansing of that also at night. Mm -hmm. So we get rid of beta, like amyloid plaques. Mm -hmm. And so that will lower your blood pressure as well. And that's why, and that happens more during the, the later part of your sleep. So if you're shorting yourself two hours of sleep, you're shorting yourself from two of the most important restorative hours of your sleep as well. I think this is a, I think one of the reasons, you know, it's really interesting because whatever Silicon Valley is obsessed with, the nations of it, some, or maybe maybe just our 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 folk get obsessed with it too. It used to be that uh, stand up comics set the national agenda. It was all about airline peanuts. Now it's about things like we're not sleeping well. We're looking at the phones till the middle of the night. Um, there's there's uh, night shift. What's wrong with it? If you want to use it, use it. What's the big deal, right? I'll get, I just want to take the story to the right a little bit, but I've been having problems with sleeping and I've got a sleep disorder of certain type and I've been attending a sleep clinic at my local wow. hospital. Wow. And the thing that stunned me about it is just how tech savvy these people are. Uh, so, for example, when I was doing the diagnosis, I went to the hospital and they gave me this kit which had a thing on my finger. Uh, I had to put mm -hmm. a face mask on and then these bands and they could actually calculate my heart rate, my oxygen levels, and how much my breathing. And so I took the kit home, plugged them all in, and then took them back the next day. They plugged it into the computer, took the data out, did a diagnosis instantly, and said, we think that you need this. And now they gave me a machine which blows air in my face. It's a horrendous thing. It takes weeks to get used to. Wait a minute, it's like a uh, fan? You look cool. You look like Darth yes. Vader. You sound like Darth Vader after, though. Those, those are, they're great. Not a CPAP. Uh, You're not talking right. about that, are you? That's right, one of those. Okay. But my CPAP machine has a 3G modem, and it dials all my data back to the hospital. Oh, my and God. And the guy said to me, he said, if you don't use it, I'll know. <laughs> so, And he can actually reprogram the machine from the hospital so and, if he can see that the machine's not and working. And ladies and gentlemen, this is why national health will never be a part of the American lifestyle. Well, <laughs> if you uh, want to cheat, Greg, do, you can... Do doctors in, a, in the UK have police powers? <laughs> Can he come to your home? Just imagine that. I just, I was so stunned that these machines, I come in, I wear them, I take them back, the computer analyzes it. And now my medical, uh, my medical team are actually monitoring my sleep through the CPAP machine because it dials up on a 3G modem every day. And I was just thinking uh, that is a real amazing advance in technology. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't happen in the US because uh, CPAP and sleep disorders are only treated for 90 days under corporate health care. Oh, that's plans. interesting. And wow. that, you're on your own. Whereas in the UK, of course, it's a lifetime disorder. It's, or, it's or, a treatment for uh, sleep apnea, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I've only got a very mild sleep apnea. I've right. got some other problems as well, but uh, I had cancer 30 years ago and various things. So mm. I, my life's a well, little that's, different. That's a phrase you don't hear a lot. I had cancer 30 years ago. That's good on yeah. you. That's great. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, I'm not dead yet. Yeah. I'm not dead yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is uh, this whole panel. Is, Georgia, how's your health? Is it okay? I'm good right now. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. Like, this panel is at death's door. So we're it's big CPAP data is what you're talking about. I, I just was really surprised about this idea of using 3G for the medical equipment to record. Yeah, no, vaccine. that's cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, the, and the, of course it's related to circadian rhythm. So once you've got a circadian rhythm mm -hmm. disorder, and for me now I go to bed at the same time every night more or less, regardless of whether I'm tired or not, and I'm a lot yeah. healthier than I used to be. Uh, partly because of flux and the blue light thing on my screen, which tells me to get the hell up and leave the dirty thing alone. Om, did you uh, follow doctor's orders? Are you now uh, going to bed early and relaxing? And Yes, no no machines in my bedroom. And um, I think and that's actually a good idea. So you, like, keep the phone and the laptop out. Everything is in yeah. yeah, that's actually probably the you single. You should even turn away your clock. Even if you're yes. looking at a clock, you should turn that away so that you can't calculate. Because if you're looking in the middle of the night, everyone wakes up 
five times a night. If yeah. you go through a light wave, that's when you turn over or go to the washroom. Yeah. And if you're looking at the clock and calculating how much longer you have sleep or saying, oh, God, I'm awake again at this time, that's making your waves hit you know, stronger than beta waves. And so you'll wake up, wake up.